In our Sunrise Smart Start, Rochester saw its 52nd homicide of the year over the weekend. Early Saturday morning, shortly after 5, officers were called to the area of Cedarwood Terrace and Quincy Street for the report of a male shot. On arrival, officers located the victim with at least one gunshot wound to his upper body unresponsive. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Currently, no suspects are in custody and the motive is unknown. Anyone with info should call 911. Two separate unrelated shootings happening within minutes of each other around 5.30 yesterday morning. The first happening at the Elk Hotel. According to police, the victim, a 32-year-old woman, was shot at least once in the upper body and then transported to Strong Memorial Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The second shooting happening at a residence on Woodward Street. Police say that victim is a 51-year-old woman who was shot at least once in the upper body. She was also transported to Strong Memorial with non-life-threatening injuries. Police, Rochester police say the two incidents appear to be unrelated at this time and anyone with information is asked to call 911. A 14-year-old shot this weekend on the 400 block of Flint Street for the reported incident around 5 Saturday. Police do say the injury is non-life threatening. The victim was taken to the hospital in a private vehicle before police got to the scene. A 20-year-old man is in critical condition after crashing into an SUV while on his dirt bike. This happening around midnight on Sunday. Rochester police responding to the intersection of Upper Falls Boulevard and Joseph Avenue where the accident happened. According to police, the SUV was trying to turn left at a green light when the dirt bike came back the other way and struck the vehicle. The owner of the dirt bike is now at Strong Memorial Hospital in critical condition. The driver of the SUV was not injured. A fire on Garson Avenue yesterday, yesterday around 6.30 has left a family without a home. Officials say the fire started near the dryer in the basement and was extinguished quickly, but wiring and contents in the basement of the home were destroyed. The rest of the home sustained smoke damage. They say nobody was injured, but both the snake and gecko were safe from the fire. That fire still under investigation. Happening overnight around 12.30 this morning, Rochester police responding to the area of Jefferson Avenue and Frost Avenue where officers discovered evidence of gunshots fired into an occupied house which was struck multiple times. Police say the occupant was not injured and no suspects are in custody. Police ask anyone with information to call 911. Well, the Bills deciding to cut ties with punter Matt Ariza on Saturday, two days after he was accused, along with two other collegiate teammates, of gang raping a 17-year-old female last October in a civil lawsuit. Bills general manager Brandon Bean states both the Bills and the NFL did not know of the allegations at the time of the draft. He says he spoke with over 10 other teams and they did not know of the alleged crime either. Bean says the victim's attorney made them aware of the accusations in late July and the Bills didn't release Ariza until almost a month later. With Ariza now off the roster, the Bills are on the hunt for a new punter as they also release punter Matt Hawk. The team held workouts bringing in four punters. They didn't sign any of them, but they say they will keep their options open in the coming days. And after being released, Arise's attorney released a statement to our sister station, WIVB in Buffalo, saying, quote, Matt is very upset and disappointed that his career with the Bills ended not because he played poorly, but because of false allegations leveled against him by a young lady and her attorney. I hope he's back in the NFL soon. He deserves to be as he is the hardest working 22-year-old that I know. Well, could inaccurate labeling on tattoo ink bottles be a fatal health concern for consumers? News 8's Chatira Marsh shares insight. A recent study provides on how this could affect those of you who get tattoos. She joins us now in the newsroom with more Chatira. A study is ongoing at Binghamton University on commercial tattooings in the United States and whether what is on the label matches what is actually in the bottle. In conducting this study, Assistant Professor of Chemistry John Swerk says so far a few errors have been found. In some cases, some pigments were missing, but in other cases, we found that pigments that were listed on the bottle are not what's actually in the bottle. Um, we found some instances where particle sizes were maybe a little bit too small uh, for 
for comfort. Swark says the research started after the group looked at how light causes tattoos to fade and took notice that other than Europeans, no one from the U.S. has looked into this for more than a decade. And we thought maybe we should, we should check into this and see how widespread the problem is. He shares once they took a deeper look at things, there were a couple areas of concern. There are some pigments where there are concerns about them being potential carcinogens, right, potential cancer-causing agents. Um, some of these pigments have been banned in the EU or they're on their way to being banned in the EU. He adds when looking at particle sizes in tattoo inks, the artist should aim at being above the 100 nanometer threshold as a general safe size limit. We found in about half of the inks that we've looked at that the particle sizes are below that 100 nanometer threshold. He says while they don't know a lot about tattoos and all the potential health problems with them, there are things that tattoo artists can do to minimize any risk, like proper sanitation while getting a tattoo and aftercare for the consumer. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Jatyra. For more information uh, on this, you can find it on our website, rochesterfirst.com. Gary Bykirk, a war hero from Rochester, honored for his birthday yesterday. He would have been 75 years old this year. The Patriot Riders of New York revving their engines for a tribute to the Vietnam War vet who served as a U.S. Army medic. Following the motor motorcycle ride through town, a plaque dedication was presented to Gary's wife, Lolly. All right, James, turning it over to you now. Uh, beautiful day for that tribute this weekend yes. and going to be a hot day today. Yeah, certainly. If we want to get our morning walk in, uh, certainly the earlier the better. Leave now if you can uh, because uh, we've got some major heat on the way. So we're already starting off uh, pretty much up, upper 60s and low 70s, but uh, we see that temperature climb very quickly. I've got us at 90 about noon today. Then we could see some numbers getting into the lower 90s, even a heat advisory in effect for the area. It is hot, it is humid. Then we get storms in the afternoon. Focus for timing here really between uh, 4 and 5 p.m. and about 10 p.m. tonight. We'll be busy for Tuesday as well. Take a look at the eight-day forecast at the end of the show. All right, James, thank you. A final look at the roads now. Things looking good out there. No accidents to report. 394, 95, 90 are clear. So it should be a smooth ride into work. The Jefferson Avenue 7th Day Adventist Church hosting a back to school giveaway yesterday. The church says their goal is to eliminate stressors for families whose kids attend RCSD as the district works to resolve transportation issues and navigates a change in leadership. This comes less than a year after the church suffered a major fire on Christmas Day. They say their efforts won't end with this event. Plus, the Rock Royal Foundation hosted their ninth annual Back to School Classic giveaway on Saturday. They say the Back to School Classic is a youth-focused and family-oriented event where the foundation gives away school supplies. They also provide backpacks, uniforms, free haircuts, food, and entertainment. Dozens of youth, educators, parents, and advocates coming together in person and virtually rallying for children's mental health on Sunday. The group calling on elected leaders across New York State to address what they're calling a severe and worsening child mental health crisis. Since the pandemic, critical mental health screenings and access to services have declined, while rates of anxiety, depression, substance abuse, as well as suicidal thoughts among children are all seeing sharp increases. Last fall, the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, along with the Children's Hospital Association, declared a national emergency for children's mental health. They cited the serious toll of the COVID-19 pandemic on top of existing challenges. Detroit Pistons star Isaiah Stewart back home in Rochester to hold his second basketball camp for youth and high school players. According to Stewart, he grew up around crime in Rochester and wanted to positively impact kids after hearing about spikes in crime in the city. He wants to encourage youth to stay focused and remember they can also overcome hard times to achieve their dreams. Here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. In Venezuela, dozens of children and older residents hard at work, carefully gluing plastic bottle caps on a cement wall, which in two weeks has turned into a colorful mural displaying the edges of two enormous blue-winged macaws. Oscar Alvarez, the designer of the project, says it will recycle around 300,000 bottle caps. A school teacher that brought half a dozen children to work on the mural says it's a great way for them to learn about recycling. 
very cool, cool project there, isn't that? Yeah, nice. Uh, and I guess it's kind of uh, reusing, right? Mm -hmm. Fall into the reuse category. Need to see that there. And you can make art out of anything. You can. Right? <laughs> uh, if we're uh, getting outside and making some artwork uh, or checking out the art around Rochester, uh, it should be a good day for it, although hot. Uh, we want to drink a lot of water, stay cool uh, as temperatures get into the low 90s. Heat index is could see 95, 96 with that extra humidity. humidity. Watch for the storms this afternoon. I'd say between about 4 and 8 p.m. We'll have some stronger storms roll through. Overnight lows just into the upper 60s and a bit cooler for Tuesday, but uh, yep, showers and storms in there as well. And then we get to the good stuff. Wednesday and into Thursday, overnight lows in the 50s, afternoon highs, low 70s, a nice stretch into Labor Day. All right, James, thank you. Thanks so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is next.